Hello, I'm Kenan Prophet. Welcome to another Blender tutorial. This one is kind of a two part. It's how to create a compass in Blender and then also an introduction to very basic animation. So I'm calling this a beginner tutorial. There's gonna be uh, a little more in-depth things with the node editor and materials and stuff like that. But I think if you can follow through, you'll be able to uh, create a cool object and be able to discover kind of the basics of animating inside of Blender. So with the new scene open in Blender, make sure we're in cycles. Um, I don't know if you know this, but they stopped development on the Blender render. So you really should always be using cycles now. <laughs> um, and we're gonna press seven for top view and five for orthographic mode. You can delete that default cube and we want to go over here to our measurement tab and I'm going to change it to Imperial and I'm pressing one for front view. I'm going to put my cursor right in the center, press shift A and add in a circle. Now I'll press seven for top view and now you can see since we've done real life measurements over here, if we scale our circle down, you can see it changes over here. So right now it's about a foot and like, what do you call it, 1.2 feet. Um, so we want it to be about the size of a compass. So um, this kind of roughly, I'm gonna do four inches. I know that's a little, maybe a little exaggerated for a compass, but it's hard to work in small units in Blender, so. We're gonna do four inches by four inches. Okay, oh, that needs to be at zero. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so now we've done that. We have the outline of how big our compass needs to be. So we can press tab and start editing. So I pressed one for front view. I'm gonna bring this up a little, press E to extrude, and then just gonna drag that down using the blue arrow until it's resting on that red line. Again, that's pretty good. So A to deselect. And now we wanna select these top row of vertices. You can do that two ways. You can press Z for transparency mode, press B to box and select them all. Or you can just press option and right click or alt if you're on a PC. And that selects that whole vertice or that whole ring of vertices. Now I'll press E to extrude and then just click to escape from that and drag that up and scale it in a little bit. And one more time, E to extrude, drag it up a little and scale it in a little. This is gonna be kind of the dome shape for our glass for the top of the compass. It might be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna just press Z to grab that whole row and bring it down just a little. And now I'm gonna press F to fill it in. So there we go, we got that basic shape of the compass going on. Now we wanna separate this glass from the rest of it. So I'll press Z for transparency. And I wanna select all these faces. So down here, while you're in edit mode, these three options are available, vertice, fa uh, vertice, edge, and face mode. So I'm gonna click on the faces. I'll press B to box, select, and drag that over all of those. Now I'll press P, and this menu comes up, and it says separate by, we'll click selection. So now if we tab back into object mode and press Z to bring back uh, the transparency, we can see we have two separate objects here. We have our glass on the top and our actual compass. So we're not gonna be doing anything with this glass for now, so I'm just gonna press H to hide it. Now I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. I'll go to vertice select mode down here. And we wanna create a loop cut in the center of this for our actual compass map. So I'll press Control R, and you can see if we just click, 
it adds this ring that you can slide. We want this map to be sort of near the top, so about right there. I'll just click, and there we go. We have those vertices set. What we can now do with that is just press F to fill it all in. And that's what we're going to actually put the map of our compass on. So now I'm going to select the face mode. So it's just this face right now. And I want to separate that from everything else. So I'll press P and selection. And I should probably be naming these. So with this selected up here, I'm going to double click that and name this the map. I'm going to select this circle, name it compass. And if we bring back our glass, you can do that by pressing control H or I'm sorry, option H. I'll select that and just name it glass. Okay. So now we have those three separate objects and I'll hide that again. So now before we start doing some texturing, we want to sort of finalize this object. So I'm going to press smooth shading and go over to the modifiers tab, which is this wrench up here and click add modifier. And we want to choose solidify. Now immediately you can see it adds some solidness to our mesh, but it hasn't applied the scale that we scaled down at the beginning when we scaled it down to four inches. So to apply the scale, we need to do press control A and click scale. And you see now it's it's applied that solidifier modifier based on what it would be if it were four inches. So it's much too thick. Um, so what we're going to do, we'll just select this value right here and change it to 0.1 inches. And that'll be pretty good right there. Now we want to add a subdivision surface and an edge split modifier. And you can see it kind of gets some weird ring around here. The order of these modifiers is very important. So um, in order to get it, in order to get them all to work well with each other, the subdivision surface needs to be in front of the solidify. So to do that, just press this arrow and that moves it above there. And there we go. Now they're all in order and you can see it's nice and smooth and also straight where it needs to be. Okay, good. So now we want to do the same thing with our glass. So we'll bring that back option H and with that selected, we'll add a solidify modifier. Where is it? Right there. We'll press control A for scale. You can see it's really doing some weird things there. So we want to change that to 0 0.01. And that might still be too much. So go 0 0.001 maybe. That's looking a little better. Um, first, let's do the subdivision surface. Move that in front of the solidify modifier. You can change the subdivisions view to two maybe. And now we'll add in the edge split modifier and we'll press smooth shading. So that's looking, that's looking a lot better. Okay. Very nice. Now I'll press H to hide that again because we don't need it. And we can start focusing on uh, the texturing of this compass. So um, first of all, we want to get this map in, or the, I keep calling it a map because it's not really a map, the, the north, south, east, west arrows thing. So I'll right click to select uh, this object. If you press Z, you can see we have that circle selected. And we'll go over here to the modifiers, which is this circle right here, and we'll click on new. And we'll name this map because I don't know what else to call it. I've been calling it that. And in order to be able to kind of distinguish, if you click this drop down menu under settings, you can change the viewport color to whatever you want. And uh, that'll just help with um, recognizing which 
material is where. Okay, now we'll click to the right of, um, under diffuse, to the right of color, we'll click this little circle and add an image texture. And this is where you'll wanna download, or not really download, just save an image to your computer that, um, that I have on my brand new Facebook page. So you can go there, it's for the tutorials I do. Um, hopefully I'll be able to start a website and you'll be able to go get resources there. Uh, but for now, we're using Facebook. So go to my Facebook page and uh, copy that image to your desktop or wherever. And that's the image we're gonna be using to put on our compass. Just something I made very quickly in um, Photoshop and um, you know, you can use it for whatever you want. It's a good sort of background for a compass. So that's what we're using. Okay, so here it is. That's what it looks like. Um, so now to get it so it's on our object, we can drag this window over here. And if these sidebars confuse you, you can press N and T to get rid of those and N on that side. And down here in the bottom right hand corner, change it to the UV image editor. Now if we press tab, oh, yeah, tab, and press seven for top view and press U, project from view. See, we have a very simple circle. And now we can load in that image that you've downloaded, which is this compass background. You can see it's a perfect circle, so the UV unwrapping is very easy. If we change this, or if we scale this circle up so that it matches the circle of that outer ring of our compass. And being a little bit picky about it. If we just hit assign, so now if we change this to rendered, you can see -da, it's perfectly mapped on this background compass image onto our compass. So we got north, south, east, and west going on. Perfect. So now I'll go back to solid mode. Um, before we go any further, I'm going to add a little bit more light so that we can see what's going on better. I'll drag this back over. Press one for front view, and where's our lamp? Here's our lamp. I'm just gonna move that down so it's closer to our compass. And we'll see how that looks. Whoa, very bright. So let's click use nodes with that lamp selected. And we can adjust this down to 25. And there we go. We have light able to see what we're doing. Okay, now I'll go back to solid mode. And so that's it, we have the map of our compass done. So let's do this part, sort of the body of the compass. We'll add a new material, and we'll call this compass body. <laughs> Works, okay. So we're gonna use an image texture, which is just kind of a plain metal um, image texture. So we'll go image texture and open. And the link for this texture will be in the description of this video. Uh, basically it's just a very plain metal looking texture from cgtextures.com. It's called Metal Base. So we'll open that. And the UV unwrapping for this, it's sort of a weird thing to unwrap. Uh, if we just press tab for edit mode and UV unwrap, you can see that's not really gonna work. And I can show you what I mean if we load in that metal image and just hit assign, if we go to rendered I mean, it's not bad, you could get away with it, I guess. Um, but things are definitely going in some weird directions. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press Z for transparent mode. I'm going to select this bottom line. I think this is what I'm going to do. Control E and press mark scene. Now if I select all of that and unwrap it, uh, that wasn't it either. Okay, so we need at least one edge selected also. So I'm going to do Uh, what am I going to do here? I select this edge right here, not that edge loop. Hopefully you can see that. Now I'll press Control E and mark that seam. Now if I select all of it, unwrap, there we go. Now it's just kind of unwrapped all of it in a straight way all the way around. So if we go rendered, you can see there's less um, seems it's less noticeable what's going on. So I want to scale this up so that the this metal texture is isn't quite as blotchy. So to do that we're going to use the node editor. So we'll just change this down here from the UV image editor to the node editor. I'll press N to get rid of that sidebar. And basically this is this is what's going on over here. You have our image texture right here plugged into diffuse, which is right here, plugged into our material output, which is what we see. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to press shift A. And I like to search for my nodes, it's just kind of a bad habit. I'm going to search for a texture coordinate. And I'm going to drop that in. Now I'll press Shift A and search for a mapping node and drop that in. And I'm going to grab the UV output and plug it into the input on the mapping, vector output, input on the image texture. And now what that enables us to do is change the scale of this right here. So I just want to go maybe 12 on each of these. And that scaled up that image texture that's wrapping around our compass, just like that. So that's pretty good. Again, it's not it's not a huge deal um, because it's such a plain texture. We really just want something that has, you know, something that's a little bit different from just a solid color. And we're gonna add some rust and some decal to it. So that's pretty good. Um, so now what we need to do is the glass. So I'll change this back to solid and I'll bring our glass back pressing option H or alt H if you're on a PC and we'll add in a new material. We'll call this glass and since we have the node editor already open we can just um, do all the materials right here. So I'll press X to delete the diffuse. Shift A and I'll search for a glass node. You really don't have to search for them if you know where they are. It's a, just something I always do. It's a bad habit. I search for every node because it's faster for me. Um, basically I'm just mixing a glass shader with a transparent BSDF. So I'll mix these two together using a mix shader. Plugging that up just like that. And now you see we have that mesh is now see through. Um, and you could leave it like that and it would be fine. You can see a little more of the glass. You sort of see what's going on. Oh, I should say also, you can adjust this based on, you know, how transparent you want it. You know, so you could leave that like that. It's really all how much of the glass do you want to see and how much of these sort of weird reflections do you want to see. You know, if you went all the way up, it's completely transparent. 
all the way down, it's just glass and no transparency. But any value of 0 0.8, it might be good. Okay, um, we might adjust things with the glass later, but we'll just leave it at that for now. And I'll go back to solid mode and again, hide our glass, the most hidden object of the day. <laughs> I'll go to the front view and we're just gonna model in a little hook, I guess, for a chain. So I'm gonna add in a um, cylinder. I'll rotate this on the X axis by 90 degrees. So just do that, press R, X, and then nine, zero. Now we're gonna scale this way down so that it fits. Sort of right there. I'm pressing Z for transparency. I want it to sort of be in the center of the compass, just like that. It's pretty good. I'm gonna go into face select mode, select this outer face and drag it out some. Maybe scale the whole thing down. Okay, now I'll press one for front view. Shift A and in a torus. Again, it's enormous, so we'll scale it way down. Press seven for top view. And basically just kind of adding a ring. If you want to distort it, you can press tab and S, X, and that scales that out a little bit like that. Now, if you maybe you want it a little thicker, you can press S and Z, and that scales it up. And of course, it's always, this little ring always has to be tilted a little because it looks cool. <laughs> well, there you go, that might be too big. Scale it down, scale them both down. Oh, the little parts, fun and tedious. So let's just press smooth shading for both of these. And we'll go ahead and add in edge split modifier for both of them. That'll get them kind of a nice straight surface. Okay. Alrighty, so it's coming along. If we go to our rendered viewport, see um, it's looking nice. So what we want to do now, we want to model in our arrow or the thing that we're going to use later to animate to make the actual spinning um, whatever it is on a compass that spins. So to do that, I'll just add in a cylinder. And where's our cylinder? Oh, it's huge. So we'll scale that way down. See, I, I told you it's hard working with exact measurements, especially when you're talking inches. But by the way, um, I keep panning like this I'm just pressing shift and the middle mouse to do that. Um, if you didn't know, I am calling this a beginner tutorial. So I hope, I hope everyone's able to follow it and no one's getting bored, or no one's getting lost. Um, okay, so I just added in that little sphere in the very center of our compass. That's gonna be what the arrow spins around. Now I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a plane. And of course, theme of the day, it's enormous, so we'll just press S to scale it. I'll press Z for transparent mode and just drag that up. And tab for edit mode. And I'll press S and X and scale it in along that axis. And what I'm gonna do now, I'll just create a loop cut in the dead center of it and delete this half of it. So just right click and delete, pressing X, delete that face. Now we'll just model this part. And just press S, X, scale it in. Maybe move that back. Just do some kind of fancy work, make it look like 
It was once a fancy compass that King George the Great used. I don't know. Just making stuff up. I've never modeled this the same way twice. <laughs> okay, that looks good. That looks interesting. Uh, but we want it to be the same on both sides. So there's a reason why I chopped it in half. We don't like doing twice as much work when there are mirror modifiers. So with that selected, go into the modifiers and click on mirror. And by default, it'll be set to an axis. That doesn't make sense. So if we just uncheck X and check Y, you can see we've mirrored it perfectly and it's completely even mesh. That's that arrow. Uh, you wanna make sure clipping's on and just go ahead and apply it. So now, boom, perfect. Uh, so we wanna make it a little bit solid. So I'll press Z for transparency mode and E to extrude and just drag it up. And if you wanna get really fancy, you can sort of, um, well, first of all, drag it up some. And now if you wanna get fancy, press Control R, create a loop cut around the center and kind of scale that out, yeah. Don't that look impressive? <laughs> Maybe that's a little too much. Scale it back in. Okay, so just kind of an interesting shape. Something that looks cool. Um, but, oh no, we went too high. Off our little, what is this little piece called? I don't know. I'm going to drag this face up. By the way, I keep, I know I keep going back and forth. I'm just pressing Z. Z makes everything transparent and then brings it back. Um, so now I'll extrude and maybe scale that out a little. Just do a tiny bit of modeling to make this little part look interesting. There we go. That's good. Maybe slide it down some, I don't know. Okay. Um, we can smooth this out, press S to smooth. And then as always, add in that edge split modifier that makes everything just look awesome. So, there we go. Now if we give that a render, da da, we have our nice spinny, pointy thing that we'll be able to animate later on. So I want to add a material to it. So with that selected, I'll go to the materials, add new, and I'm just gonna use this same material. So I'll from the drop down menu, select compass body. Um, and you can see it applied the gray texture. Actually, that, never mind. that's not what we wanna do, I'm sorry. Let's delete that. We'll add in a new. We are gonna use that same material, but we want it to be separate. So just select this metal base and the images you have preloaded. I'm gonna press seven for top view. Oh, where'd it go? I'll go back into solid and I'm gonna press U and project from view. Now if we change the node editor into the UV image editor we can scale this up and hit assign. And now, boom, there we go. We have that same metal looking texture. But we want it to be a little bit glossy. So I'm going to go back to the node editor, drag this out, and we'll mix this. I'm just pressing Shift A and searching for these nodes. Glossy BSDF. I'm gonna plug it into the bottom of that mix shader. And we don't want it to be too glossy, just a 
very little bit. So I'll do it maybe 0 0.06. That's good. Okay, good. Um, what else? Let's give this little guy a material. We can just do, well, we'll do him later. All right. Now on to the fun part, making this map look as if it is aged. So I have a tutorial on how to do decal and rust. It's actually how to create a rusty chain in Blender, um, which that chain, by the way, would be really cool through here. Someone should make the chain and put it through the compass. That'd be cool. Just thought of that. Um, anyway, we're just going to be doing basically what I show how to do in that tutorial, and that is adding rust or grunge to any object. So we have our map material selected, and it's just the image, diffuse, and output. We're going to press Shift A and search for a mix RGB node, not mix shader, but mix RGB. And we'll plug this in, making sure that the image texture stays on top. So you have two color inputs. We want that image to be on top. And now we're going to add in another image texture. So we can press Shift D to duplicate this node. But we want to change that image. So we want to open a different image. And this will be just um, another image from cgtextures.com. It'll be decals rusted 007, I believe. So you can load that in. And now if we drag the color output into the bottom of the mix RGB node and the alpha output into the factor input, you can see Donna, a whole bunch of rust and grunge. Yay, very exciting. Um, and if it's too much, you know, maybe you say, yeah, bring it on. I love that. Maybe you want your compass to look a little bit nicer. You can add in a brightness contrast node into the alpha input. Make sure it gets the alpha. And simply turn down the brightness of it. So I went to 0.5. I think I'm going to stick with that. Now, really hope I'm not losing you. We're going to duplicate the rust texture by pressing shift D. We're going to change it to non-color data. I'll press shift A and add in a bump node. Now I'll change or connect the color output into the height input and the normal output into the normal input of the diffuse. And you can see what that did. Add a whole bunch of bumpiness to our rust which rust is bumpy, so that's good. Um, but it's far too much, so we want to decrease the strength of it to something that you like. Also, it's important to apply the scale, control A, scale, and that might change your results a little bit. Um, so, you know, this value is really however much you want there to be bump or rust on your compass. I'm going to leave it at 0.245, because I like that. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to do the same to this guy. Our uh, rust, or our compass body. So all of this is good. We have our image texture. Now we're going to press Shift D, duplicate that. And this will be a different rust texture, decals rusted. And shift A, add in a mix RGB node. And the same drill, color to the bottom one, alpha to the factor. Boom, we got a whole bunch of rust around the outside of our object. And same thing, if you want it to be less or more, Brightness, contrast. This is, the, this is kind of the annoying part. You have to make sure this brightness contrast is on the alpha, not the color. Um, so I'm going to turn mine down a little. Something about there. And 
same thing, Shift D to duplicate that rust texture, change it to non-color data. I'll press Shift A, add in a bump node, color into the height, normal into the diffuse. And it's far too much, so we'll take it way down. Maybe the scale needs applied. Press Control A, scale, just in case. Something about there. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, oh, another thing I want to do is around this top ring. I want that. I want this top ring, this top edge around the compass to be black. So to do that, we need to, if we just press tab for edit mode, we don't have, we only have the inside. And that's because our solidify modifier hasn't been applied. So I'll just go ahead, press tab for object mode and apply all of these modifiers. Now, if we press tab, you can see we have done a whole new set of vertices. So I'll just press Option and right click if it'll let me. Why is it let me? I guess you have to do vertices. There we go. Select that top ridge and I'll just over here in the materials add in a new material. We'll just change it to a very dark, almost black color and hit assign for just those top faces. Now there you see that top ring is just completely black. So that's good. That is a little less distracting. All right, so um, well maybe this bump mapping is a little too crazy. I'll select this material, turn that down a little bit. Okay. Now we want this part right here to have a material. So I'll press tab, I'll UV unwrap it, but I'll just do smart UV project and it's such a small little thing, it doesn't matter. And we'll just do this compass body material and hit assign. We'll do the same thing for this guy. Just hit unwrap, compass body material and assign. Now if we see what that looks like, yeah, it's that's good. Um, you can go overboard with the small parts, but that's not really too noticeable. So as long as there's something rusty there, I'm happy. All right, so our compass is coming along uh, pretty nicely. We can, we're almost done, I think. We can see what it looks like with the glass. If we press Alt-H or Control-H, what am I doing? Let's deselect everything, Option-H, there we go. So yeah, there we go. We have our compass. And by the way, with this with this rust, this decal here, you can find any rust texture you want and you can plug it in there. Um, or maybe with the bump map, what I should have mentioned, this, this mapping, this scaling, we have our metal texture scaled 12 times. You can apply that same scale to the bump map just by dragging that vector output into the vector input and you see now it tiles it by times 12 so you kind of have that nice groove in the middle which I kind of like so I think I'll leave it like that okay so I think we're done um, oh this center piece needs something so let me do that I'll hide oh wrong thing hide the glass I'll select all of this and just do smart UV project. And we'll just do compass body and assign. Good. Alrighty. So now um, I promised some animation. Um, and this is just going to be some very basic beginner keyframing animation. So. If you're already familiar with all that, don't be insulted. Um, 
But if you're not, hopefully you can learn something cool that can help you uh, make some cool little animations and uh, you can start doing bigger and bigger, cooler and cooler things. Um, so basically what we're gonna do, just with this little spindle, whatever it is, uh, selected, down here we have our timeline and it's set to 250, which is this end number right here. If you want it to be longer or shorter, you can adjust that. Um, I'll just do 200. And you can see that shortened our timeline here. Um, so now we can add in keyframes to this timeline and that'll affect what our object does. I explained that horribly. Um, I'll just show you. So on frame one, I'm gonna press I and add in a location rotation keyframe. Now, if we jump ahead to frame 200 and rotate this guy just by pressing R to rotate and dragging it around, and I press I and add in rotation keyframe. If we jump back to the beginning, you can see, yay, it spins around. So, that's really the basics of it. To delete this last keyframe, go down here to where these nice little keys are, click available all the way at the top, and just delete. And now we just have our first keyframe in place. So if you wanna do an animation similar to the one I showed at the beginning, you can jump maybe to frame 100, rotate this guy, by a bunch as if this compass has gone rogue. Press I and it automatically adds in the keyframes necessary now because available is still selected down here. Now you can see it spins around super fast and ends. I had mine sort of go a little bit crazy. You can have it go back and forth for a while just by jumping to keyframes Press R to rotate, I, and it adds it all in. It adds everything in between these two keyframes. It adds whatever movement you do before you press I. It adds it in between there. So now we'll just have it sort of pivot back and forth a very little bit. These last couple frames. And then of course we want it to end pointing straight north as it should because it's not Jack Sparrow's compass. Or maybe it is. All right, so now we'll play. Going crazy. Oh, finding its bearings. Maybe not. Yep, got it. You know, if you want some time at the end for it to stay there, you can just increase your animation, drag it out to maybe 20, and you'll have a little more time for it to just be stationary. And that's it. Um, yeah, that's how, that's the very basics of keyframing animation. So if you want to see how it looks with the glass and with everything else, you can unhide the glass, go to the rendered viewport and hit play. And obviously our samplings can't catch up, but you can sort of see what's happening underneath that glass, the compass spindle moves. So now of course, What's the purpose of an animation if you can't put it into a video clip to put on YouTube or to show the Facebook world or whatever it is you want to do? So you need to render it. So you have to set up a camera. Oh, where am I? Press solid view. We're way far away from our compass. I just pressed O, by the way, to go to the camera viewport. And if you want to scale it in, just press G and S. That scales the camera way in to 
wherever your compass is. I'm just pressing R to rotate this camera around. Maybe right there. It's always a good idea to add in a plane. So you have something your compass is resting on. Now if we go to the render view, you see that's what our camera sees. So if you say, yep, I like that. I wanna render that animation right there. What you do, you go to the render settings, which is this camera right here. And you'll render it out as a PNG image sequence. Under samplings, you wanna change that to something that's a reasonable value, maybe 150. It's not that many, but you don't wanna go crazy. It's a very simple animation. You don't need all that many samplings. Samplings, by the way, are just kind of what makes your image have a better quality. So 150 is good for something like this. And you wanna choose the output directory of your animation and create a new folder for that because it's gonna create essentially 220 PNG files. So just animation, go inside that folder and hit accept. Um, this value right here is whether or not you want to be 100% of HD, which is 1920 by 1080, or just 50%. It all depends on where your animation is going. Um, you know, what you're using it for, 50% usually is just fine. It still looks great. Um, and that's kind of the basics of it. That's, that's it right there. That's kind of all you need to know. Now you're ready to just jump back to frame one and hit animation. By the way, if you wanna animate your camera, you know, I'll press G and S, scale it back. Um, it's the same way. You can press I, and if, if that error comes up, the report error, no suitable context, it means down here under the available, you just need to X that out. Now if I press I and add in a location rotation keyframe, Maybe at the very end, just press G, whoa, and scale it in. And now press I, location rotation. You can see when we play our animation, our camera is slowly pulling in or pushing in on the compass. Give it a very dramatic effect. Which way will it point? Okay, so that's the very basics of keyframing animation and you are off to a good start because so you have a pretty cool model here. Um, you have a camera pull, pushing in on a compass that is deciding what direction to point. Um, so now you're all set. All you need to do, make sure your animation is starting at frame one, ending at frame 220, or however many frames you have down here, and click animation. And now it'll begin rendering out a series of PNG files. It'll create 220 of them, because that's how many frames you chose. And what you'll be able to do then with them is put them together uh, as a video clip. And, or you can simply, when this is done rendering, you can hit play rendered animation and you'll be able to watch the animation of your compass right inside the Blender player. So there you go. That's a tutorial on how to create a compass and how to do some basic animation, some basic keyframing animation. I hope you can use what you've learned here to create some cool animations and cool things. Thanks for watching.